Good evening. Evening, yes. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, Let us know, anybody that's watching right now, are we upside down or sideways to you guys, or are we just right? We're getting mixed messages from uh, our phone. Hope everybody is well and yep. everything going good. And uh, looks just, good on our phone. Just wanted you guys to know that um, everything is uh, coming up roses. <laughs> um, oh. God is good. Yes, He is. And, all uh, the time. We're excited about what Jesus is Amen. doing. Um, we want to remind you of our service Sunday. You do not want to miss our service Sunday. Come and join with us. Um, it'll be July the 17th. Uh, so come and join with us. And uh, we appreciate your coming and being a part uh, of our service. If you can't come, then you can always join with us on Facebook Live. Um, but just know that we appreciate everybody and Appreciate your sharing this time with us, and uh, I know it's uh, been storming around a little bit and raining a little bit. We we need the rain definitely. Sure do. Um, just want everybody to stay safe and well. Um, let me also remind you of a couple of other things. One is um, in August we have our couples retreat. And we want to invite you uh, as a couple, married couple, to come and join with us and be a part of that. Uh, you can sign up Sunday at church. You can talk to Andy, Wendy, uh, Robert, or Robin, and uh, they'll take care of Weekend that for you. Weekend of August the 12th, is that right? Yeah, 12th, 13th, uh, yeah. the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yes. of that weekend. Um, it's and be a so, good time uh, together, so come and join with us. And yeah, also, we would love to have you guys. I'm excited about something that's coming up the last Sunday of July, July the 31st. Yeah, I have asked uh, Logan Grant to come and uh, share with us, and he's going to uh, be sharing in the morning yeah. service. So you come and be with us. That's August 31st, I believe. Shelby. Talk to her about joining with our worship yeah. team and just just helping with worship Sunday. Her, I think her and Luke both may be coming. He's going to try to. Um, think. So that'll be the thirty first. So come and join yeah. with us. They've been ministering uh, and working in a church. McKay, Mc, McLeansville. McLeansville. Urgent uh, Church. Urgent uh, Church, and uh, he is coming. Uh, a year and, and a half, he, I think. Yeah, almost. Yeah, going on two years is coming uh, uh -huh. November. So uh, come and join with us, and let's let's see what God's going to do. And, Amen. And, uh, it's going to be good. Uh, so that's coming up uh, two weeks from Sunday, so don't forget that. Um, and got a lot of different things happening and going on, so get involved and, and be a part of, of what God is doing. Um, I wanted to talk to you tonight about something... I think kind of kind of brings everything together that we've been talking about this summer. We spent the first part of the summer talking about the the uh, armor of God and putting on the armor of God, and and I talked to you about it's not just about pieces, but it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so uh, we want you to. I want all of us, myself included to become what God's wanting us to become. Last week, we talked to you about the love of God, that how, how it is a, a love that's a decision that is not based on feeling and that he loves us with an everlasting love. And we're to extend that love because he first loved us. Uh, and so it gives us an ability. And that's, that's the whole thing. We don't have it in our natural ability to just love people that don't love us. That's not human. Uh, and when I say that's not human, that's not our first reaction. But the Bible says if we're going to be what God wants us to be, then we've got to go beyond just the ordinary and we got to take that next step. Uh, and so tonight I wanted to talk to you about something that 
that kind of brings it together because it is important that we understand how important it is to do what God's asking us to do, to be obedient. When we talk about obedience and, and think about it in the terms of what the Bible talks about obedience, uh, and I, I want to I share a thought, a, sh a story with us tonight that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 15. And God has spoken to Saul. Saul is the king and has told him that he is to go up against the Amalekites who, when Israel came out of Egypt and went into the promised land, the Amalekites were not friendly at all. They opposed them at every hand. And so God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe them out because of their refusal to open up to you guys. And so he tells Saul, he says, I want you to go down and I want you to destroy everything. Uh, I want you to kill everyone. I want you to burn everything, uh, even down to the animals, the sheep, the goats, the donkeys, the camels, kill everything. And, uh, and let, me, let me just say, when I talk about that, first, my first thought is, in my New Testament mind, in my understanding of God, it's hard for me to rationalize what God is saying. And to understand, I, I understand not spiritually, but I understand from a, a reason of if you allow this to live, if there are descendants that live, then they're going to come back and seek revenge on you. I, I understand that, but it's still, it's hard for me to balance out at times what God's asked them to do of destroying everything yeah. and everybody. And so... Uh, Saul is sent to do this. And I want Denisa to, to read for us. We're picking up after they've gone to do what God's told them to do. This happens. This is in verse 10 of chapter 15. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king for he has turned back from his following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he set up a monument for himself, and he has gone on around, passed by, and gone down to Gilgal. Now, look at what he says. When, when they've gone and they've done what they're supposed to do, uh... Or, or God told them what to do, and then they went to do it. God speaks to Samuel. Samuel is a prophet. Samuel um, has been a leader in Israel, and then all of a sudden Israel desires they want more than just a spiritual leader. They want a king. And so Saul is appointed, uh, anointed by God, um, to be that king. And... And throughout his tenure as king, there have been times when he hasn't done exactly what God wanted him to do. He hasn't done everything that, that God asked him to do. And so God wakes up Samuel and he says, look, I regret the fact that I made Saul king over Israel. Now, I have a question. And in my, in my mind, the question is simply, if God knows everything and he knew what Saul was going to do, why does he now regret? Well, because he gives us the opportunities to fulfill what he's asked us to do. Now, he already knows whether or not we're going to do it. He already knows whether or not we're going to um, uh, fulfill what he's asked us to do. But he gives us the opportunity. It's the same idea when God comes to Adam and Eve and, and they've committed the sin and have eaten of the fruit and they, they're hiding from God. And God says, Adam, where are you? You think God didn't know where he was? He yes, he did. He knew exactly where Adam was. And he knew what Saul was going to do. But he gave him the opportunity 
Just as he gave Adam and Eve the opportunity to make the right decision, he gave Saul the right, uh, the opportunity to make the right decision. Now, Saul didn't do it. Saul failed. And, and look, look at what he says. It troubles Samuel. It troubles Samuel because he loves the Lord and he loves Israel. And he, 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 he is torn because they wanted more than him to be ruler over the land. And yet he knows that, that what they've done is gone beyond what God wanted. It's not what God ever wanted for their lives. But because their upheaval, because their continued asking, God said, okay, here, you want it? Here it is. It's not what I think is best for you. It's not what I want you to do, but that's what you want. Here it is. And you know, the New Testament says that, that there's coming a time and even is a time now that people refuse God and push God away to the point that he gives them over to their reprobate mind and they believe a lie. Why do people believe that, that they're walking in truth when they're so far away from God? It's because they believe the lie. And it's not until the scales are pulled back from their eyes and they see, oh my goodness, how incredibly wrong, wrong. it was. <laughs> um, my mind was incredible. How could I, hold, I, I, I know. <laughs> incredibly stupid to do this? But, but, but God, God gives us that, that in every one of our lives, he's given us mm -hmm. Uh, the right to obey or yep. to to disobey. Mm -hmm. We are not, in other words, we are not pawns that God moves around uh, to do only, we can only do what he wants us to do. We have a decision. We have a choice. And we can decide to be obedient or to be yes. disobedient. We can decide to accept or to reject. The whole idea of salvation it is, is that it is open to whosoever will. And so it is, it is that free choice that we have. And Saul has missed the boat. And let's look at what he's, the next segment of scripture in verses 13 to 15. Listen to what, what Saul then says. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amicalites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now, I want you to look at what he said. So when Samuel goes to Saul, Saul sees Samuel coming and he goes, ooh, ooh, thank you, thank you, Jesus, or thank you, Lord, thank you, Father, I've done obedient. I've been obedient. I've done what God's called me to do. I've done exactly what he asked me to do. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. And Samuel goes, if you did what God asked you to do, why do I hear the bleeding of sheep? Why do I hear the sounds of the animals that you have brought? You were to destroy everything and you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't do what God asked you to do. And I want you to look at what Saul said. Then Samuel said to Saul, No. Oh, and Saul said, They have brought them from the. Um, so Amalekites. Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God and the rest you have utterly destroyed. Look Look at what Saul said. Saul said, uh, I went and did what God wanted me to do, but the people, they wanted to hold on to some of the stuff. Blame it on uh, they, they, wanted, they wanted to keep the best, but we destroyed all the Amalekites. We, we destroyed all them, but... But some of the best uh, that they, they wanted to hold on to. Uh, um, I, I like the wording here that's given to us there in verse 15. Because he's, he, says, he says, 
the people. Now, I want you to notice earlier, the people told Samuel that Saul has gone to make a monument to himself. And now Saul is telling Samuel that the people did this. And I want you to read on down with us. Verse 16. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet, and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, speak on. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? B before we go on, look, look at that 17th verse. He says, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribe? In other words, when you wasn't full of yourself, wasn't you still the king over Israel? When you didn't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, before you wanted to go and build monuments to yourself, didn't God make you king over Israel? The New Testament puts it in these ways, that if we will humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due season. There's a difference in God exalting us and our Amen. exalting That's ourselves. Right. That's right. There's a, there's a huge difference. Sometimes we get carried away by the, uh, by our own creation. creation, by our own integrity, by yeah. our own intelligence, by our own good looks. We get, we get so caught away with ourselves that we forget that it's God. Mm -hmm. Go on, verse 18. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag king. Oh, there you go. We're hey back. Guys. Sorry. <gasps> it went dead for a minute. I cannot hear y'all. Nancy says, can you hear us now? I hope so. All right, let's go. I want, I want everybody to... to to remember what God says. God says, I want you to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And Saul, uh, Saul says, we've done that. We destroyed, we destroyed the Amalekites. But he indicted himself with the very next statement because what he said was we destroyed the Amalekites, but I brought the king back mm -hmm. with me. Well, you didn't destroy him. You didn't destroy him. So you didn't do what God asked. God said, don't leave anything living. And Saul says, I did, I did what God asked me to do, but I brought the king back. And in verse 21, he says, but the people took the plunder. They, they, wanted, they wanted the good stuff. Uh, the message puts it that they kept all the stuff that was of any value and the stuff that nobody wanted anyway, they destroyed and burned. And I, I think about this. Now think about how much of our lives is it that we offer to God that we offer not our best, but our unwanted parts. Wow. Yeah. We offer to God what's left over instead of the very best of us. Um, you know, I, 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 I just... It just makes me think of that when when Saul says they took the very best, they wanted to keep that. But but you know, you know, in reality, they they were gonna offer it to the Lord. Come on. That wasn't what they were gonna do. We're not fooling anybody. The whole idea for all of us today is the reality is that God has called us to obey him. Amen. And if we only obey in part, that's disobedience. Mm -hmm. 
If we only obey in part, we are being disobedient yeah. to God. What if, what if Naaman, what if Naaman had said, you know what? I'm not going to dip in this old nasty Jordan River seven times. I'm only going down five times. He wouldn't have been healed. You see, I don't think every time, every time he went down and came back up that he got a little bit more. I don't think anything mm -hmm. happened to Naaman until the seventh time. Mm -hmm. And I want us to realize that, that what God is asking for us is our total obedience. Amen. He's not asking yes. for a part. Yeah. He's not asking for leftovers. He's not asking for the scraps. When somebody asks you for food, or when you donate canned items to somebody or to some cause, do you give good cans that you would eat or do you find cans in your pantry that's been there for four years and you hadn't used and you're not going to use them? So, you know, instead of them just going to waste, I'll give them away. Hmm. How much of our lives do we do that with God that we don't give wow. him our best? Yeah. That we don't give him everything. About. Listen, we don't have anything without God. Amen. Our very life, our very existence, we don't exist without God. Amen. Now, you can deny him and you can refuse him and you can rebel against him and you will have a part of a life in this life, but that's it. Or we can be obedient. Now, I want you to look at what Samuel said. And this, this is... This is powerful. Here's the thought. So Samuel said, "Has the Lord as great delight in burnt has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord." He also has rejected you from being king. Samuel didn't even address, okay, I don't think they were going to offer this to God. Samuel just said, look, let me tell you something about the heart of God. Mm -hmm. You're talking about sacrifice and all this stuff, and you're going to give him the blood of the rams and, and the fat off the, you're, you're, going to, you're going to do all this. You know what he'd rather have? He'd rather have you be obedient than to offer up all of this stuff that you brought right. back as a sacrifice. Because he didn't ask you for this sacrifice. He asked you to obey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it my way. I don't care. Well, you know, I believe we ought to be able to worship according to the dictates of our own heart. No, I believe we're supposed to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. It's not according to how I want to do it. It's not according to, to what I think or what I say. It's according to what he says. Yes. It's according to what he's, he's speaking into all of it. And I'm not talking about style. I'm not talking about a certain song or this song or style. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about worship. To the New Testament believer, every day is a holy day. Yeah, I believe we should set aside one day. Sunday is that day we've set aside yes. and it should be a day of worship and praise to our God. Yes, I believe that. But to a New Testament believer, every, every day is day. a holy day. Yes, amen. And every day is yes. to be a day of worship and praise. Every day or to be a day that we talk to the Amen. Lord. Every day is how we communicate with God. What if what if Denise and I only talk to each other one day a week? That would not be good. I personally don't believe we would have made 45 years no. only talking to each other 
one day a week. How do we make it with God talking to him one day a week? How do we make it with God when we think, well, if I do this, then I'll, you know, you know, he'll, he'll overlook. When, when have we had that fellowship with him? When have we had that? He, he wants us to be obedient. He wants yes. us to walk. Yes. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is. The Bible says that we're supposed to be givers, givers of life, givers of everything that God has invested in into us. The, the Bible says that we're supposed to worship in spirit and in truth, that we're supposed to exalt the name, yeah. let the praise of God be continually on our lips. Mm -hmm. To cry out to God in, a, in prayer, in supplication. What, what, whoopee do. I gave him an hour on Sunday morning. Whoopee do. What is the rest of my life? How am I walking out? Am I giving him Monday just as much as I give him from 10 to 11 on Sunday? And, and okay. You, we got a job. You got to go. You got obligations. You got duties. But you know what? You still walk in the ways of the yeah. Lord. You can still communicate with God. Amen. You can still. Some of my best communication with God is not when I'm in a, in a, in a at church on an altar or in the pulpit or it's it's when it's just me and God and we can I can yes. just pour out my heart Amen. and I can just say God I don't understand. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Look, I thought about that and I thought about the fact, you know, you know, well, Saul was this good looking guy and he stood head and shoulders over everybody else and the people were enamored by him and, oh, yes, God can use him. But what kind of people does God use? Now, don't misunderstand what, but this is what the Bible says. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 to 29. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Look, it, it's all about Him. Yeah. You know what He's asking in our lives? Willingness. Mm -hmm. A willing vessel. Obe Amen. He knew I wasn't the best speaker. He knew I wasn't the best preacher. He knew I wasn't the best, well, maybe the best looking. No, he knew I wasn't. But it's okay. Because it's not about oddness anyway. I can't win one person to Jesus Christ. No. The only person that can save people is Jesus. Amen. That's his job. We're supposed to be Fishers of men. We're supposed yes. to be telling them the good news. We're supposed yes. to be letting them know what Jesus wants to do in their lives. Yes. Amen. That's what it's all Amen. about. Being willing to do. Yes. He will equip us. Amen. He will empower us. He will give us the ability to do what he asks us to do. Even yes. when you think, I can't do that. He gives us that ability. Amen. And I thought about this. In this account, God says, okay, I'm done. Saul, you're finished. You're not going to be the king. Now, it takes a little while for all of this to play out. But God says, this is it. My hand's off of you. I'm going to anoint somebody else as king. And he sends Solomon on that quest. And he goes into the house of Jesse. And Jesse starts praying his son's by him and, and all of a sudden one of his sons come 
And even Samuel thinks, Ooh, this has got to be him. This has got to be the one that God can use. Look at him. People will follow him. Look how good looking he is. Look, he's got a beard. He he looks, he looks, his hair's thinning out a little bit. But no, he looks good. People will follow him. Look at what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. So it was when they came that he looked at Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. That's it in a nutshell. Yep. You want to know what obedience obedience. Obedience is all about. It's about the heart. Yep. And God knows. He sees your heart. He knows. Who are you going to follow? Yep. Who are you going to give praise to? Yourself? Others? Man? Or God? God. Who is the apple of your eye? You know, I was thinking about this and, and something reminded me of this over the last couple of days. You know, the very first commandment that God gives to us is that you shall have no other gods before me. And you think, well, you know, I, I don't worship Confucius or I, Baal or, or, or uh, nobody, I, I, I don't. But where we put our heart, yeah. where we put our treasure, we make gods of it. Sometimes people make gods of their job. Sometimes people make gods of possessions. You know, we looked at this past Sunday of the life of Job with the testing and what was taken away from him. And his response was, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away, blessed be yep. the name of the Lord. Yep. It's not about how many possessions you have. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about how even how many people you will affect. It's about, are you obedient? Right. Are you doing what the Lord asked you to do? That's what it's all about. When we stand before the Lord, I will give an account for Otis. Mm -hmm. I can't answer for Denise. Mm -mm. I can't. She yeah. can't answer for me. We will stand before the Lord on our own. And the question becomes, what are we worshiping? And what is important in our life? Yep. True. What are we putting before God? What? Who are we obeying? Mm -hmm. Somebody's voice we're listening to. Oh, yeah. Somebody's, and there's, there's a lot of voices out there, and there are a lot of voices that lead people astray. And you got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and you got to be open to God, yes. and you got to be, whoa, 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 wait a minute. The Bible says, try the spirits to see if they be of God. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord's going to heaven. Not every person that stands in the pulpit is going to heaven. Not every person that sits in a pew is going to heaven. Not every person that doesn't sit in a pew is going to heaven. What's in your heart? Are you being obedient to the Lord? That's, you say, well, how does that pull everything together? Because you see the whole, the whole armor of God is ineffective if we're not obedient. Mm -hmm. The love of God is ineffective if we're not obedient. Amen. But you know what? I don't understand. I don't either. There's a lot of things that God has asked me to do I don't understand. But 
but I would rather be obedient to him. Mm -hmm. Yes. And to hear the words when this life is over, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yes. Than to be obedient to every other voice around. That's right. And miss what God has for my life. Amen. Amen. I want to hear the Lord. I want to be obedient to him. And you say, well, pastor, how does the Lord speak to you? He speaks to me through his word. Mm -hmm. I've never heard an audible voice. There have been times when I've had an overwhelming presence of God and, and it just floods into my soul. I've had a few instances of that in my lifetime of, of I never heard an audible voice, but I, I hear the speaking in my heart, right. in my head, in my mind, in my in life. In your heart. I mean, yes. And, and, and the spirit bears witness. Amen. It's not just Otis's thoughts, because I can tell when they're Otis's thoughts. Because God says, my ways are not his ways. Right. The whole point of what I'm trying to get us to see tonight is above everything else in the day in which we live, we've got to be obedient to God. I believe the day may come if things progress the way they are progressed in the last five years, 10 years. I started to go further back, but you don't even have to go that far back. You don't have to go too far. If they all. progress as they have, mm -hmm. I believe we could be like the disciples that were in the book of Acts in the early church when they are commanded, don't do this and don't do that by authorities. And their reply is, we're going to obey God. Mm hmm now, I'm not saying be disobedient to those. The Bible says be obedient to those authorities over us, yes. But when their ways contradict the ways of the Lord, that's a whole different ballgame. We're going to have to answer whether we've been obedient. Well, well, Lord, I did exactly what you wanted me to do. No, you didn't. You bring back the king. I told you to kill everything. You brought back goats and sheep. I hear them bleeding. I told you to destroy it. Well, I was going to give them to... doesn't matter the rationale. It matters were you obedient to what Amen. the Lord Amen. asked you to yeah. do. God help us. God help us to be what he wants us to be in this hour and in this day. God, help us, I pray. Father, we thank you for your love and mercy and grace. We thank you for this opportunity to come and share your word together. Yes, Jesus. And Lord, you, your Lord. word tells us that you prefer obedience to sacrifice. That our rebellion is as witchcraft. Our stubbornness as iniquity. God, I pray that you would help us to be moldable and pliable in your hands, that we become obedient to your call and to your voice. Have your way in our hearts and in our lives. Your will be yes, accomplished Lord. in us and through us, I Amen. pray. Amen. In everything that we do. Yes, Jesus. God, have your way. I pray tonight for every need, those spoken, unspoken, you know every need, those that are watching with us, Lord, you know every need of their lives. Amen. We thank you for what you've already done, for the way you have brought forth miracles yes, even this week. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, God. we lift up Rick and Glenna Penn to you. We pray, Amen, God, that Lord. you would touch both of them physically, bring yes. healing in their body. Yes, God. We thank you for what you're going to do yes, and for Jesus. the healing that you're Amen. bringing in them thank and you, through Lord. them. God, have your way. Put your hand upon yes, them. God. Be with Edward. Minister yes. to him and thank touch you, him. Jesus. Bring healing in him, God, Lord, today, able, Lord. I pray. Jesus, we man. thank you for Augusta. Continue to Amen, minister Lord. to her. For, for thank you, Sheila, Jesus. pray, God, that you minister to her yes, and God. to her mom. Yes, God. And, God, we pray that you would be with, with um, Dale Stogner 
that, Lord, you would move and minister and Amen. touch her. Amen. And, Father, we lift up Debbie to you. We yes, pray that right you would now, move Jesus, and minister to name, Debbie Father. Slack. We pray, God, right that there, you would Father. move and minister Jesus and bring name, healing. God, Father, Jesus, have your Lord. way tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory. Amen, we thank God. you for who you yes. are and for what you're doing yes, in our lives thank and in our Jesus. midst. For Susan Windsor, continue to minister to her, yes, touch God. her, bring healing. May she just sense the mighty power Amen, of the Lord. Holy Spirit. Amen. For Donna, God, we're believing you for oh, a touch. For we're believing you for healing in her name. body. We thank you for what you're going to do. Yes, God. In Jesus' name we, we you, pray Jesus. and we believe together. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. I don't know what happened. We had a brief interruption. I know there was a pretty bad storm here. I don't know if that's what it was, but there was a brief interruption where we lost it for a minute or two or three, but it came back. Uh, and I hope, I appreciate your staying with us yeah. and uh, being with us tonight. Continue to support the church. Continue to give. As the Lord blesses you, Amen. pour Amen. into him, yes. be obedient to him in yes. all things. You can go to infusionchurchnc.com. You can go to our giving page. You can give through Easy Tithe. You can give uh, text giving. There's a number there. Or you can uh, mail it in to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 272. Six, three. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. We love y'all. We will y see you Sunday, 10 o'clock. God bless Don't you. Don't miss it. Uh, God's given me a word for this hour, and I just ask that you, you join with us and be with us uh, for God, God to move good. and minister. Amen. Have your way. We give yes. you praise, Lord Jesus, in all things. Lord bless you guys Bye. for being with us tonight.